Hello everyone! Today we're diving into the world of ancient buildings that have withstood the test of time and continue to serve important roles in modern life. Join me as we explore everything from the incredible Christian church that has been running for 1500 years to the mighty pantheon of Rome as we check out the 15 oldest buildings still in use today. Number 15. Basilica of Santa Sabina Perched on Rome's Aventine Hill, the Basilica of Santa Sabina stands as a remarkable example of early Christian architecture, offering both historical insights and a thriving religious presence. Constructed during the 5th century under Pope Celestine I and Pope Sixtus III, this basilica is one of the best-preserved Paleo-Christian structures in Rome. Its grand architecture provides a window into the design of early Christian churches, including the original saint, Peter's Basilica. One of Santa Sabina's unique features is its ancient cypress wood door, which dates back to the 5th century. This door, encased in a marble frame, is adorned with intricate biblical scenes, including one of the earliest known depictions of the crucifixion. Near the door, a hidden cloister and an orange tree serve as living tributes to the Dominican order, whose headquarters are located here. According to legend, the orange tree may be linked to Saint Dominic, the founder of the order, and could be descended from a tree he planted. Another intriguing element inside is a dark stone on a column, often referred to in local lore as the Devil's Stone, supposedly thrown at St. Dominic. This stone, more likely a Roman weight, adds a touch of local myth to the basilica's rich history. A notable feature within the basilica is a small column set lower in a niche, offering a hint of an earlier structure that preceded the current basilica. The marble floor of Santa Sabina is also noteworthy for its embedded tomb slabs, including those of the Master General of the Dominican Order from the late 13th to early 14th century. These slabs provide a glimpse into the past and underscore the basilica's ongoing spiritual significance. Number 14. The Pantheon The Pantheon, an iconic Roman structure, had to be featured on our list. Built around 125 AD during the reign of Emperor Hadrian, this marvel has seamlessly blended into contemporary use while retaining its ancient charm. Unlike many historic buildings that have become obsolete, the Pantheon has been adapted over centuries, serving as a Roman Catholic church since the 7th century. Stepping into the Pantheon is like stepping into a living piece of history. Its grand interior and expansive dome continue to captivate visitors, showcasing ancient engineering prowess. The Pantheon's dome remains the world's largest unsupported concrete dome, with an oculus at its center that allows natural light to flood the interior, creating a dramatic effect. Architecturally, the Pantheon is a testament to Roman grandeur, featuring Corinthian columns and a vast dome that highlights the ambition of Roman builders. The oculus not only enhances the visual appeal, but also demonstrates the precision of ancient construction techniques. While the Pantheon's original function is still a topic of debate, whether as a temple or a site for imperial ceremonies, its role as a symbol of architectural and imperial excellence is undeniable. Over the centuries, the Pantheon has weathered various challenges, including fires and lightning strikes, and has adapted to different uses while maintaining its historical essence. Its influence is seen in the work of neoclassical architects who drew inspiration from its design, echoing its portico and dome in structures worldwide. The Pantheon's enduring legacy continues to inspire and awe, making it a cornerstone of architectural heritage. Number 13. The Hagia Sophia Nestled in Istanbul, once known as Constantinople, the Hagia Sophia was commissioned by Byzantine Emperor Justinian I during the 6th century. It was conceived as a grand church that would epitomize the splendor of the Eastern Roman Empire. The project was monumental, involving over 10,000 workers who labored intensely to realize Justinian's vision. Completed in just six years, it was consecrated in 537 CE. The basilica was designed by the architects Anthemius of Tralles and Isidorus of Miletus, 
Quickly, it became a symbol of Byzantine magnificence. Despite its architectural marvel, the Hagia Sophia faced many trials through the ages. The 6th century earthquakes caused partial dome collapses, and during the Fourth Crusade in 1204, the structure endured looting. Nevertheless, these setbacks did not diminish its significance. In 1453, following the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople, the Hagia Sophia was transformed into a mosque. This conversion involved adding a pulpit and incorporating Islamic architectural elements. The interior was decorated with elaborate calligraphy and tile work, blending Byzantine and Ottoman styles. In 1935, under Turkish President Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the Hagia Sophia underwent another significant change becoming a secular museum. The removal of plaster revealed the original mosaics, exposing a rich tapestry of artistic history. Although recent debates have arisen regarding its current status, the Hagia Sophia remains a symbol of cultural heritage. Recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985, it continues to attract visitors globally, offering insights into the diverse and layered history of Istanbul. Number 12. Castel Sant'Angelo the Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome has undergone many transformations throughout its extensive history. Initially commissioned by Emperor Hadrian in the 2nd century CE, it was constructed as a mausoleum for himself and future Roman emperors. However, the role of Castel Sant'Angelo evolved significantly over time. In 271 CE, Emperor Aurelian integrated the mausoleum into the city's defensive walls, marking its shift from a burial site to a military fortress. During the medieval period, it served as a prison, housing a range of individuals from various backgrounds, including notable figures and political prisoners. One of the most famous legends associated with Castel Sant'Angelo dates back to the 6th century during the Plague of Justinian. According to the legend, Pope Gregory I led a penitential procession through Rome, and as he passed the castle, the Archangel Michael appeared atop the structure, signaling the end of the plague. This legend added a layer of mystique to the castle's already rich history. Architectural changes over the centuries reflect its evolving roles, with the addition of defensive towers, fortified walls, and hidden passages illustrating its strategic importance. Today, Castel Sant'Angelo serves as a national museum, preserving its historical narrative and presenting it to visitors worldwide. The museum's extensive collection offers a detailed exploration of Rome's past, showcasing the castle's journey from an imperial tomb to a historical fortress and museum. Standing as a testament to Rome's resilience, it allows future generations to appreciate its diverse history and enduring legacy. Number 11. Diocletian's Palace The Diocletian's Palace in Croatia presents a striking blend of ancient history and modern functionality. This UNESCO World Heritage Site, renowned for its well-preserved Roman architecture, now accommodates a contemporary grocery store within its historic walls. The Mala Pepliceva Palace, a structure from the 13th century, later renovated by the Venetian architect Joraj Dalmateac, forms part of Split's rich historical fabric. The decision to install a supermarket in this ancient palace in 2014 raised eyebrows and sparked debates about cultural preservation. From a practical perspective, incorporating a modern grocery store into a historical structure introduces various challenges. Regular deliveries and the necessary infrastructure adjustments must adhere to strict conservation guidelines. Local authorities have expressed concerns over how this modern addition might affect the architectural integrity of the palace and the broader historic preservation efforts in Split's UNESCO-listed center. Despite these issues, the blend of ancient architecture with contemporary commerce provides a unique experience. Visitors can navigate through ancient corridors while shopping in a modern setting, offering a tangible connection between different eras. This integration reflects the evolving nature of urban spaces and highlights the ongoing challenge of balancing historical conservation with modern needs. Number 10. The Nanchan Temple Perched on Mount Wutai in Shanxi, China, the Nanchan Temple has stood since the Tang Dynasty, dating back to 782 CE. 
Despite centuries of change and historical events, this ancient Buddhist temple has remained a testament to China's rich heritage and enduring Buddhist traditions. The Great Buddha Hall within the temple exemplifies Tang architecture with its square layout and symmetrical design, featuring distinctive camel hump braces and dugong brackets. The hall, though modest in status, presents a simple yet elegant facade that invites visitors to experience its serene atmosphere. The temple houses impressive sculptures, including the central figure of Sakyamuni seated on a throne, surrounded by intricately detailed attendants and celestial beings. Despite enduring challenges such as earthquakes and renovations, the Nanshan Temple has emerged as a symbol of resilience and cultural significance. Visitors to the temple are enveloped in the timeless essence of Buddhist wisdom and artistic beauty. From its origins in the Tang Dynasty to its current status as a revered cultural landmark, the Nanshan Temple stands as a beacon of hope and enlightenment, continuing to inspire and guide generations with its profound teachings. Number 9. Horyuji Temple Horyuji Temple, located in Ikaruga City, Japan, stands as one of the oldest temple complexes in the world, with some of its wooden structures dating back over 1,400 years. Built between 552 and 710, this temple complex has been carefully preserved through various repairs and renovations, representing a unique blend of historical continuity and religious importance. Upon entering, visitors encounter a serene courtyard that houses the main hall and the iconic five-story pagoda, the oldest building within the complex. According to legend, the wood used for this pagoda was harvested in 594, underscoring its ancient origins and craftsmanship. Among the temple's architectural treasures is the Octagonal Hall of Dreams. Constructed around 739, this hall is recognized as Japan's oldest surviving octagonal building. Founded in 607 by Prince Shotoku, a prominent Buddhist figure, Horyuji played a crucial role in spreading Buddhism throughout Japan and beyond. The temple houses approximately 2,300 invaluable artifacts, including some of Japan's earliest Buddha statues. Designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993, Horyuji is less known to international tourists, but remains a vital cultural and historical site. The surrounding town of Ikaruga offers a tranquil setting with its forested areas, farmlands, and historical traces of the temple's past artisans. Despite its ancient roots, Horyuji continues to function as an active monastery, upholding centuries-old traditions and spiritual practices. Number 8. Kirkoboa Garder Kirkoboa Garder, situated in the Faroe Islands, is celebrated as one of the world's oldest continuously inhabited wooden houses. With a remarkable history extending over 900 years, originally established as a Catholic seminary, it evolved into the largest farm on the Faroe Islands. The survival of this ancient wooden structure is particularly notable given the region's lack of forests and limited timber resources. According to local legend, the timber used for its construction was mysteriously delivered pre-bundled by the sea, adding an element of intrigue to its history. Managed by the Patterson family through 17 generations, Kirkuboa Gardur reflects a rare continuity of heritage. The house includes the Rojkstova, or smoke room, which dates back several centuries. The loft stoven, or loft room, holds historical significance as the location where the oldest known document from the Faroe Islands was created in 1298. Nearby stands the evocative St. Magnus Cathedral, a symbol of the region's medieval past. Although incomplete, the cathedral now functions as a museum, offering insights into its rich history and cultural significance. The museum operates on a trust-based payment system, embodying the Faroese spirit of communal care. Adjacent to the cathedral, a small islet contains remnants of the village history, including structures lost in a devastating 16th century storm. Visitors to St. Magnus Cathedral are enveloped in the enduring charm of Faroese culture and resilience. Time for the fancy topic! 
An extraordinary ancient structure believed to be the oldest building ever discovered has been found submerged off the coast of an undisclosed location. Experts estimate the architectural wonder to be over 10,000 years old, predating the known oldest civilizations. The massive stone columns and intricate carvings suggest a highly advanced society that may have once lived in harmony with the water. Divers exploring the area were the first to spot the structure, its grand corridors and staircases leading deep into the water. Archaeologists are baffled by the discovery and continue to investigate how such an advanced civilization could have existed so far back in history. The mystery of why it was abandoned remains unsolved. Could this submerged city be the inspiration behind the legend of Atlantis? What other secrets might be hidden beneath the ocean's surface waiting to be found? Let us know in the comments with the hashtag fancy topic. Number 7. The Arles Amphitheater The Arles Amphitheater, located in the town of Arles in southern France, is a stunning example of Roman engineering and architectural excellence. Constructed in 90 AD, this monumental structure was designed to host grand events such as chariot races, gladiatorial contests, and theatrical performances, drawing crowds of over 20,000 from across the region. Spanning more than 450 feet, the amphitheater showcases the scale and sophistication of Roman entertainment venues. Modeled after the Colosseum in Rome, the amphitheater features an oval arena surrounded by tiers of seating, arcades, and a network of galleries and staircases that facilitated crowd movement. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century, the amphitheater underwent a significant transformation, becoming a fortified town center with over 200 houses built within its walls. This adaptation included public squares and chapels, turning it into a bustling residential area. Today, the Arles Amphitheater remains an active cultural center, blending ancient heritage with modern use. It continues to host traditional bullfighting events, linking contemporary audiences with its historical past. Additionally, the venue is used for theatrical performances, concerts, and various cultural events. The site was recognized as a UNESCO heritage site in 1981, reflecting its importance and enduring legacy. Number 6. Mundashwari Temple the Mundashwari Devi Temple, perched on the Mundashwari Hills in Bihar, India, is steeped in history. Believed to date back to 108 CE, it stands as the oldest continuously functioning Hindu temple in northern India. This ancient site remains dedicated to Devi Mundashwari and Lord Shiva, symbolizing a long-standing tradition of worship. The temple's distinctive octagonal stone structure is an early example of Nagara-style architecture unique to Bihar. Despite enduring centuries and facing numerous challenges, including damage to its tower and original roof, the temple has been preserved through ongoing restoration. The Archaeological Survey of India and Indian government efforts have been crucial in maintaining this landmark. Recent updates, such as solar-powered lighting, enhance both visibility and sustainability while honoring the temple's historical character. The restoration projects have involved detailed interior cleaning, repairing religious idols, and cataloging scattered stone fragments, all supported by government funding. These improvements ensure that the temple remains accessible and well-preserved for future generations, balancing modern needs with respect for its ancient heritage. Number 5. The Monastery of St. Catherine St. Catherine's Monastery, located at the base of Mount Sinai in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, has a rich history that stretches back to the 6th century AD. Constructed between 548 and 565 AD by Byzantine Emperor Justinian I, it holds the title of the oldest continuously inhabited Christian monastery in the world. The monastery is traditionally believed to be on the site where Moses encountered the burning bush, adding profound spiritual significance for Christians, Muslims, and Jews alike. One of its standout features is the ancient library, operational since the monastery's founding. This library boasts an impressive collection of codices and manuscripts, ranking as the second largest collection globally after the Vatican Library. Among its treasures are the Codex Sinaiticus from 345 AD, 
a key biblical manuscript, and a 5th century copy of the Gospels. The collection also includes documents about the lives of holy women from 779 AD and the Apology of Aristides, a crucial text with its original version lost. Besides its literary wealth, the monastery houses possibly the largest collection of early Christian icons dating back to the 5th and 6th centuries. These preserved icons offer a rare glimpse into the evolution of religious art within the monastery. Number 4. Rheinstein Castle Rheinstein Castle, located along the Rhine River in Germany, stands as a remarkable historical edifice with a rich and varied past. Constructed in the late 13th century by the Archbishop of Mainz, the castle originally served as a customs fort designed to protect the river route from robber knights and safeguard trade. Its strategic location, perched on a rocky outcrop overlooking the Rhine, made it an ideal defensive position. Over the centuries, the castle experienced periods of grandeur and decline, eventually falling into disrepair by the 17th century. The 19th century marked a turning point for Rheinstein Castle. In 1823, Prince Friedrich Wilhelm of Prussia purchased the dilapidated ruins and initiated a comprehensive restoration project. His vision was to transform the castle into a picturesque symbol of Romanticism, a popular movement in art and architecture that idealized medieval themes. Under his stewardship, the castle was meticulously reconstructed, reflecting the architectural styles of the period while incorporating modern amenities of the time. The restoration not only preserved the castle's historical character, but also integrated new elements, such as the neo-Gothic chapel and ornate interiors. Today, Rheinstein Castle remains a captivating destination for visitors. The castle's well-preserved features include a functioning drawbridge, a portcullis, and a 500-year-old grapevine that continues to yield grapes each year. The surrounding landscape is equally enchanting, with a 19th-century park that includes meandering paths, serene waterfalls, and panoramic viewpoints. The castle's museum offers insights into its history and the daily life of its past inhabitants. Additionally, the castle's crypt, located beneath the Neo-Gothic chapel, serves as the final resting place for Prince Friedrich and his family, adding a personal and historical dimension to the castle's legacy. Rheinstein Castle also hosts various cultural events and activities, including medieval fairs and classical concerts, which attract visitors and enhance the castle's role as a living historical monument. Its continued preservation and use as a cultural venue exemplify the successful blending of historical preservation with modern engagement. Number 3. Taos Pueblo Taos Pueblo, nestled in the Taos Valley of New Mexico, is a celebrated Native American settlement that holds the prestigious designations of UNESCO World Heritage Site and National Historic Landmark. Known also as Pueblo de Taos, this community has been continuously inhabited for centuries. The settlement's origins are somewhat enigmatic due to the tribal customs that preserve its oral traditions. Scholars estimate that Taos Pueblo dates back to around 1000 CE with the construction of its adobe structures taking place between 1000 and 1450 CE. These buildings are distinguished by their traditional architecture, featuring unique adobe designs with minimal modern modifications. Taos Pueblo's architecture reflects its adaptation to the local environment, with its multi-storied adobe buildings designed to maintain interior temperatures in the harsh desert climate. The Pueblo's distinctive design includes thick adobe walls, small windows, and flat roofs, all built to maximize natural cooling and heating. The community's structure also includes a central plaza, which serves as the heart of social and ceremonial life. The resilience of Taos Pueblo is remarkable, as it has preserved its cultural and historical integrity despite the passage of time. The community's decision to remain largely isolated from mainstream America helps safeguard its sacred history and traditions. This preservation underscores the strong connection between the residents and their ancestral lands. The settlement continues to practice traditional ceremonies and festivals, such as the annual Taos Pueblo Feast Day, which draws visitors and serves as a living testament to the Pueblo's rich cultural heritage. 
The continued existence of Taos Pueblo amidst changing historical currents highlights the profound relationship between its people and their heritage. This settlement offers visitors an authentic glimpse into the rich tapestry of Native American life, underscoring the importance of preserving such historical sites. The Pueblo's ongoing efforts to balance tradition with modernity ensure that it remains a vibrant cultural hub while safeguarding its historical significance for future generations. Number 2. The Tower of Hercules The Tower of Hercules, an enduring marvel of Roman engineering, remains a functional lighthouse to this day. Constructed in the 2nd century, the tower, originally known as Ferrum Brigantium or Brigantia Lighthouse, is remarkably well preserved. Positioned on a small hill, its location was likely chosen for its strategic importance, possibly even serving as a sacred site dedicated to the legendary figure Hercules. According to legend, the tower marks the burial place of Gurion, a giant defeated by Hercules as part of his twelve labors. Legend has it that Hercules ordered a city to be built over Gurion's grave, a story reflected in the city's coat of arms. Over time, the city of Karuna has developed around the Tower of Hercules, which continues to stand as a symbol of strength and myth. Unlike many ancient Roman structures that have deteriorated, the Tower of Hercules has maintained its role and structure, guiding ships along the Spanish coast. UNESCO recognizes it as the only Greco-Roman lighthouse that has preserved both its form and function for centuries. The tower's impressive design includes a cylindrical base and a tower that originally rose to about 30 meters, which was later extended during the Middle Ages. The structure's robustness is partly due to its construction with local granite, which has weathered remarkably well. Historical records indicate that the tower was used not only for navigation, but also for military purposes during the Roman Empire and later periods. The site has been the focus of numerous archaeological studies, revealing remnants of the original Roman beacon and various artifacts from its long history. Additionally, the Tower of Hercules has inspired various artistic and literary works over the centuries, reflecting its significant role in maritime history and local folklore. Its enduring presence continues to captivate visitors, who marvel at its architectural ingenuity and historical significance. The tower remains a focal point for local cultural celebrations and historical tours, offering a tangible connection to both ancient and medieval maritime heritage. Number 1. Acoma Pueblo the Acoma Pueblo, located in New Mexico, serves as a testament to long-standing human habitation with roots extending over 2,000 years. Founded around 1100 AD, this Pueblo has withstood the test of time and historical changes. Initially isolated and challenging to access, the Pueblo maintained a peaceful coexistence with the Spanish until tensions emerged in the early 1600s. Despite destructive events caused by the Spanish, Parts of the Pueblo that are believed to date back to the 1100s still stand today. Newer structures have been built on the same sites as their ancient counterparts. The Pueblo's unique location on a mesa provides natural defenses, contributing to its resilience throughout history. The Acoma people have developed a sophisticated system of agriculture, utilizing terraced fields to cultivate crops such as corn, beans, and squash which are essential to their traditional diet. The Pueblo is renowned for its traditional pottery. You will, these all will be available for sale? Which has been made for centuries using techniques passed down through generations. These pottery pieces are celebrated for their intricate designs and are an important aspect of Acoma cultural heritage. Presently, only a few dozen residents live in Acoma Pueblo without modern conveniences such as electricity or running water. Nevertheless, the Pueblo remains a vital cultural and historical site. It embodies a living link to the past, where indigenous traditions blend with Christian influences. Acoma Pueblo consists of four distinct communities, Sky City, Acomita, Anzac, and McCarty's. Situated approximately 60 miles west of Albuquerque, its elevated location has provided protection and shelter for over 1,200 years, shielding the community from historical conflicts with neighboring Navajo and Apache tribes. Acoma Pueblo is also known for its historical and spiritual significance. 
The San Esteban del Rey mission, built in the 17th century, is a notable landmark within the Pueblo and represents the blending of Spanish colonial and Acoma architectural styles. This mission, with its adobe walls and wooden beams, stands as a symbol of the complex interactions between the Acoma people and Spanish missionaries. The Pueblo actively preserves its rich cultural traditions through ceremonies and festivals that continue to be central to Acoma life, attracting visitors interested in learning about the Pueblo's heritage and ongoing cultural practices. Have you ever visited one of these ancient buildings? Let us know in the comments below! See you next time!